Um, uh, we up until just a, 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 a couple of years ago, we didn't know what the skin and what the outside surface of triceratops, triceratops looked like, except for a, a small portion that was found on the tail of, a, of an incomplete specimen. Um, we know that that skin texture varied a lot from uh, under the neck to over the back of the, the pelvis. And some of this, uh, if you would call them scales, were, were this size. They were, were, were huge, and they had almost like a little nipple on them. And if we compare those to an earlier ancestor, Cetacosaurus, Cetacosaurus uh, uh, had a similar looking pattern towards the rump of, its, uh, of, of these specimens. And they, from, from those nipples, had this long hair-like projection coming out. Uh, so you could speculate that perhaps even Triceratops ha but possibly had these long hair-like projections. We have not found them, but because of those, those nipple-like projections on the skin, on these big scales, it's a possibility. And that gives you some kind of a very different idea about what Triceratops might have looked like. So Triceratops was, was a, a fairly large dinosaur. But in comparing to other dinosaurs and, and dinosaurs of that size, Triceratops had a pretty large brain, perhaps about the size of maybe even a, 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 of a baboon. Uh, uh, now, I'm not saying that they were as smart as baboons or even acted like baboons, but, but for, for a, a plant-eating dinosaur, they had a pretty good-sized brain. Um, uh, again, uh, it was actually larger than Allosaurus. Allosaurus didn't live at the same time, but a meat-eating dinosaur, you'd think, would have a, a larger brain than a plant-eating dinosaur. And this dinosaur has has a pretty good sized brain. So Triceratops is a, uh, belongs to a group called Ceratopsian dinosaurs. And they started off just at the beginning of the Cretaceous, uh, which is about uh, 130 million years ago. However, Triceratops itself lived only in Western North America and it lived only between 67 and 66 million years ago. What was the function of the frill? Probably for protection. Um, if you're a T-Rex and you want to latch onto a Triceratops, the place to go for is the throat. Well, that frill protected the throat, and you'd have to practically flip the Triceratops over to be able to grab it by the throat. So um, I think it was for protection. And, and also species recognition, um, sexual display, a number of other things have been postulated, but I think the main purpose was protection. I would say no. <laughs> First of all, Taurosaurus um, uh, does not go to the end uh, of, of, we haven't found a Taurosaurus at the top of the Lancian Age sediments where Triceratops is still around. It's gone already by that it's, time. It's gone already by that time, which, which tells us that uh, this genus then, you know, why would one species develop into this, this very bizarre thing at the very end? Uh, Taurosaurus is, I believe, is, is a distinctive genus. It is, it, is, it is a real thing. It's not the end stage of Triceratops. We know very little about it. Again, if we look back at, uh, uh, we've got only a few dinosaurs where we've ever actually been able to sex them, and we sex them based upon the presence of what's called medullary bone in the marrow cavities. If it has medullary bone, that is only produced by an ovulating female. So if it doesn't have it, we don't know what it is. But if it has it, we know it's a female. So there's a chance that in, in, in one of these animals, we, maybe we can find some medullary bones. Uh, that's really the only safe way of saying we can, we can determine whether it's a, a male or a female. Be, uh, because we don't have good skeletons, I mean, they're so rare, we don't know yet. I mean, we, we do know that they had this big fermentation plant going on. Because if I stand inside the belly of a triceratops, I can't touch the inside of both sides of the rib cage. So they were, they had this huge uh, fermentation plant again, so that they were eating plants. But exactly what plants, we don't know. Now we may speculate that that beak was perhaps useful for tearing down trees. I, I kind of think that, like to think that uh, a, a dinosaur like Edmontosaurus would eat the leaves from the trees and Triceratops would eat the trees. <laughs> Now, I may be wrong about that, but I think they, they would have the ability to tear a tree down and then get it to where they could take the leaves from the, from the tree. Probably between uh, uh, five and, and, and eight tons, so somewhere in there. big. T-Rex. Yeah, potentially weighing more than T-Rex. Um, uh, T-Rex has part of their skeleton is lightened because a lot of them, the bones are hollow. Um, 
uh, Triceratops horridus is more frequently found in the lower uh, regions uh, of, of, of the lance formation. And um, from the one specimen that we've seen, the, the, na the, the, the nasals, it looks like it's Triceratops horridus. I'm not positive about that yet because we have found nasal horns from Triceratops porosus in the bottom of the lancinate sediments as well. So it could be either one. Thanks. You're welcome.